This is the DJI Air 3. It's the latest drone from DJI, and I've had this now for about four weeks. Now, in this video, I just want to share my overall experience so far, having flown this recreationally and professionally. There's a lot of chatter about the new camera, and we're going to focus really, really heavily on this camera. Now, while I don't want to make this an Air 2S versus Air 3 video, I do feel there will be the need to talk about the Air 2S in this video and make comparisons to the new drone, the Air 3. With that being said, let's just start off this video with a montage of footage that I have filmed with this drone. Let's get started. What's good everyone, Ken here, you're watching Original Dobo, and I felt it really important to start the video off with video that I have filmed from the Air 3. This camera has really been super impressive, and there's been a lot of chatter about the sensor size and whether or not it's going to be on par or even an improvement over the Air 2S. So if you don't get any further in this video and all you cared about was footage, you got to see the footage, and I will tell you that this camera sensor punches well above its weight class, so you'll find timestamps down below where you can quickly and easily navigate to the information that you are most interested in. With that being said, let's head over to the bench and talk about the new design and the build quality of the Air 3, because a lot has changed and a lot has changed for the better. So the Air 3 now resembles more of a Mavic 3 and Mini 3 with its new design language. We have much larger front arms, new and improved landing gear, which allows the drone to sit much higher. And most of that's in part to the fact that we now have this much larger camera here in the front. We have improved obstacle avoidance all the way around. So we have 360 degree obstacle avoidance. This is very similar to what you will find on the Mavic 3. The battery now inserts from the rear, which we're gonna talk more about the battery here in a moment. Alrighty, so now we're going to go ahead and compare the Air 3 to the Air 2S. Obviously, this is the previous generation, so there's going to be a lot of comparisons in multiple videos. So first things first, the exterior is actually a little bit more similar than other drones. There's just some subtle tweaks here, but still it's very much an Air, air drone. I would say that the Air 2S was a shrunken version of the Mavic 2 Pro, and the Air 3 is a shrunken version of the Mavic 3, but it is slightly larger than the Air 2S in uh, total size. You can definitely see that it sits higher. It's just a larger footprint overall. The props are also larger on the Air 3 than they are on the Air 2S. Again, that's going to create more lift. It's going to create better efficiency. The Mavic Air 3, I'll tell you straight out of the gate before we even get into the battery, has a much better flight time than any drone I have flown to date. And that's that says a lot. But anyways, props are about two and a half inches larger overall diameter than they are on the Air 2S. So that's something to keep in mind. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the weight of these two drones. All right, so first let's start off with the Air 2S. We're gonna set the Air 2S on the scale. And the Air 2S comes in at 586 grams. Let's set this off to the side. The Air 3 comes in at 722 grams. So roughly about 150 or so grams more, 160 grams more than the Air 2S. So it is a heavier drone, but not by much. Again, once you creep over that 250 gram mark, it doesn't really matter, but just know that it is a heavier drone. However, I don't think it will affect how easy it is to travel with this. I've been able to just throw this in a bag, just like I used to do with my Air 2S. In terms of the front, you can see the differences on the camera system here. 
We now have that dual camera set up while we just have that single camera on the front side of the Air 2S. Obstacle avoidance is also different, obviously. The Air 2S had those four sensors on the front while the Air 3 only needs those two sensors. Thanks to part those new lenses, they're able to see much more. These are an omnidirectional sensing system on the Air 3 versus the Air 2S. On the back side, we also get those same sensors. While the Air 2S only had those two sensors on the rear, on the Air 3, you have those sensors to again, where you can see the side of the drone a little bit, while it also can sense the rear. So the obstacle avoidance is definitely going to be better on the Air 3, and we'll have to test that in action to see just how well it actually does versus the older model. And we'll do that in the full comparison where we look at the Air 2S versus the Air 3. But overall, all the improvements are much greater. Let's go ahead and open these guys up here so we can see the overall footprint because the Air 3 is going to be way larger than the Air 2S. So we'll go ahead and open this up here. And there we go. So you can see side by side, footprints quite a bit different. I would say the Air 3 still is a lot smaller than a Mavic 3 obviously a lot larger than the Mini 3 Pro, so it definitely still sits in between those. And we've just seen this as we've gone on that the drones have slightly gotten larger over time, but overall, I think the improvements are pretty, pretty vast. Obviously, the batteries insert differently into both of these, and one nice thing about the Air 3 is it has these little notches here in the airframe to where the props can rest in there so you don't have to worry about them sliding across the top of the drone uh, in transit. I think that's just a nice touch and just something that they've made to sort of sleek out the design of this, but overall great design of the drone. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the battery because the battery is going to be a hot topic. And if there's one reason why you would upgrade from the Air 2S to the Air 3, it's going to be battery. Alrighty, so battery life and battery. So the Air 3 claims to have a 46 minute flight battery. And now in my experience, I've been able to achieve roughly about 43 minutes of flight. Now, let me explain that 43 minutes of flight. That is from take off to land. That is also with me canceling return to home and auto land three times. That is really pushing the battery to its absolute max. But I'll say that is impressive to be able to hit that, that type of flight time, that type of performance out of a battery on a drone this size. Now, that's mostly in part to these new batteries. This is a 4,200 milliamp hour battery. Now, these old batteries were 3,700 milliamp hour batteries. Now, I talked about if there was one reason why you would want to upgrade from the Air 2S to the Air 3, it's going to be batteries. And now it has nothing to do with flight time. It has to do with reliability and longevity of the batteries. Now, these batteries are very similar to the Mavic 3 battery, and if we just look at them overall, you can see the design changes that they've made. Now the Air 2S clips in the top of the drone, just like that, while the Air 3 slides in the back of the drone. Now, personally, I prefer the slide in the back of the drone for a couple of reasons. If these batteries should start to swell, they're not gonna exit the aircraft as to where I have dropped two Air 2s because battery swelling. And just to further prove this point, let me grab batteries that are less than six months old and show you what happens to them. So these are two batteries from my Air 2S that I have had for roughly about six months time. Now these batteries, if you can't tell, and I'm gonna bring them up to the camera so you can see, they are swelling. And if I set them on the table, the easiest way to tell whether a battery is swelling, they teeter back and forth. A good battery that's not swelling should sit flat on the table. I should be able to press it, no problem. But these obviously teeter back and forth, which create problems. Because if I press it into the drone here, just like this, you can see what's happening. I have to really press and it never actually clips into the drone itself. And what will happen is as it goes through flight, it will declip itself, popping out, sending your drone plummeting to the ground. So if there is one major reason why you would want to upgrade to an Air 3, it's because of these batteries. And it's it's no fault, it's just battery technology then versus now was entirely different. Again, this drone is almost three years old versus something new. Uh, it just makes sense. Like batteries aren't meant to last forever and 
battery tech was entirely different back then than it is now. So that is one of the major reasons why I would highly suggest switching to an Air 3 or any other drone would, would have to be because of the batteries. Alrighty, so with the kit that I was provided for my Air 3, it came with this. This is the Flymore kit that comes with two additional batteries. So you get one battery in the drone and two additional batteries, plus this little charging case, this charging bracket that you can slip your batteries in. Now this is pretty much redesigned. This connects to the charging brick that they include. Charging brick does not charge these batteries simultaneously. It only charges one at a time and it starts with the, the highest capacity burst and then goes through and charges the lowest capacity battery. However, what's interesting about this charging case is it does have a unique trick up its sleeve. Let's say you have two batteries that are, let's say 50%. You have one battery that is, I don't know, we'll say 80%. You wanna get a full flight in out of that battery. You can actually use this to charge the remaining batteries by holding the power. And what will happen is it will go through and take the energy, the leftover energy from your two lowest batteries and push it to your highest capacity battery, allowing you to charge one of your batteries. Now, all of these batteries are fully charged, so I can't demonstrate that for you, but you'll have to take my word for it that you can take the energy from your two lowest batteries and push it over to your, two, your one highest battery. A little bit confusing, but in practice, it works really well and it could help you out in a pinch. Now that Flymark kit did come with this. This is that 100 watt wall charger. If this looks familiar, this came with the Mavic 3 Pro. It also ships with some of the Enterprise drones as well. I really love this little charging brick. I not only charge my drones with it, but when I'm traveling, I could just take just this charging brick and also use it for my MacBook. So it's been really invaluable and super, super handy when traveling and especially when I need to travel minimalistically. Now, one thing I like about this charging brick is that there are two USB-C ports on here as well, so I can charge my RC and I can charge the batteries. I just want to reiterate again that you cannot charge your batteries simultaneously. However, you could take one of these, throw it into your drone, charge from your drone, and then also charge three in the charging case if you wanted to charge two batteries simultaneously but you can't charge three batteries simultaneously within this charging case. So just something I wanted to make mention of. All right, let's go ahead and talk about OcuSync 4 and the brand new DJI RC2. This is the DJI RC2, and this is what was shipped with my Mavic Air 3. And they've made some improvements to this RC that help it perform much better than its predecessor, the DJI RC. So for starters, this new RC has external antennas, which will help with the range and connectivity at longer distances. There's always been some confusion and controversy around why DJI didn't include this on the first generation. The second notable change on this RC is the inclusion of an internal fan. Now, if you remember the DJI RC had a heat sink on the back here, which would help cool it. It used passive cooling while it was very quiet. It would get very, very hot and almost unusable indirect sunlight or hot environments. So the screen brightness is still 700 nits of peak brightness, which makes sense because if you want it higher brightness, you would need something like the RC Pro. So it makes sense why they did not include a thousand nit screen, but we have 700 nits. And I will tell you, because we have an internal fan and this device is able to remain cool for a longer period of time, it does stay cooler and the screen stays brighter for a longer time. So that is definitely something worth noting. Another thing I wanted to add is that the performance of this is far superior to the DJI RC. Now, maybe that's because of that internal fan helping it run cooler. It doesn't seem like it lags and locks up quite as much. I noticed with the first generation, I had problems where it would lag. I couldn't screen record and fly at the same time without having a lot of stutters on the screen. I did not experience any of those issues while using this throughout the duration of testing. This RC also has the brand new OcuSync 4 protocol built in. OcuSync 4 improves the range and the overall reliability at a distance by a lot. Now I did do some tests on this and I will have a video with the first flight. I don't wanna call it a range test per se, but just know this, you can fly further at a lower altitude with OcuSync 4 than you could ever do on OcuSync 3 or even OcuSync 3 Plus. I mean it when I say this, it is very, very impressive 
to maintain very low altitudes and be able to fly this at a distance and have structures in front of you. There's very little lag and the RC has a beautiful 1080p resolution back down to the RC and it's just next to perfect. And at first I didn't think it was gonna be a big deal, but now that I've used this, it's almost ruined my experience for any other drone that I have flown. And that's even including the Mavic 3 Pro, which is pretty crazy because that drone just came out, but it's just something worth noting. And because they really didn't change this RC too terribly much, shameless plug here, my love handles, so I can still use my lanyards because nothing's really changed too much on the exterior that I can still use my lanyard mounts on this RC. But there you go, that's the DJI RC2, that's OcuSync 4, an impressive combo with a lot of range and immense amounts of performance. All right, let's talk about the thing that probably everybody's interested in most, the camera. Alrighty, so I intentionally saved the best for last, which is the camera. So let's talk about the Mavic Air 3 camera. So there's a lot of controversy around this camera. So we have two cameras here. We have a three times lens and we have the wide lens. They're both one over one third sensors. The wide angle sensor has an F 1.7 aperture while the three times has an F 2.8. There is no adjustable aperture here. I know a lot of people are probably hoping for that, but didn't get it. It's also not a one inch sensor. And a lot of people are probably confused as to why DJI didn't continue where they left off by adding a one inch here on the Air 3. And the answer is they didn't need to. So let's talk about sensor technology. So sensor technology now today is far superior than it was to two years ago. Take for instance, the camera that I am filming on right now is a Sony A1. It is a backside illuminated stack sensor, which would be impossible theoretically three years ago, given the fact that this has 51 megapixels and the image quality would be terrible and low light performance would be terrible. But with new technology, we're able to do a lot. And I'm actually filming in what I would say a pretty dark office space with black walls and I'm running at 2000 ISO. The image looks good, right? Well, same can be said here for the Air 3. So what we have here is a backside illuminated stack sensor. And where this differs from most camera drones is most camera drones have a front side illuminated sensor. And what this means is there's a layer of metal wiring on top of the photodiodes, which can block some light from reaching the photodiodes. And I know that's a lot of hoopla, so I'll throw up a diagram so you can take a look at what I'm talking about. Now, a backside illuminated sensors have the wiring on the backside of the sensor, which allows more light to reach the photodiodes. Backside illuminated sensors have a higher sensitivity to light, which is like the equivalent to dilating your eyes and then walking outside into the sunlight. But then we have to combine this with the stack sensor. So a stacked CMOS sensor is pretty much the next generation after backside illuminated sensors. And what this does, it takes ultra fast DRAM, sandwiches it in between the sensor and increases the sensor readout speed. So again, you're gonna get much faster and much better low light imaging. If you were looking at those low light shots in the beginning of this video and saying, holy cow, how is this possible? That's how it's possible. Having a stacked backside illuminated sensor makes that possible. So it's one of those things where you cannot get fixated on the sensor size. You have to pay attention to the technology that is going into the sensor, which essentially makes for a much better camera. So this camera is capable of shooting 4K60, 10-bit, D-Log M. You also have a night mode built in, and there's even a vertical video option in here as well, which takes, I wanna say it almost looks like an open gate image, which is a four by three image. And then it takes the top and the bottom and sort of sandwiches it together and gives you a vertical video without the need of rotating the sensor like on the Mini 3 Pro. I think it's a very ingenious way to get vertical video because it also still allows you to see your peripherals while you're flying. I really enjoy this method of vertical video. And if you're not already, check out my Instagram. I've been posting video and photos from the Air 3 for the past like two weeks now. Nobody probably has any idea. I didn't say what type of drone it was, but all that vertical video was shot in the 4x3, which is the 9x16 mode, the vertical video mode. And I think it looks absolutely amazing. 
So this camera also is 48 megapixels. So for still imagery, you're going to be able to shoot either 12 megapixel or 48 megapixel. You do, do need to enable that in the settings. If you don't turn that on, you're not gonna have that option. I will tell you the 48 megapixel photos are huge. I shot like maybe 20 photos and I had about five gigs of photos on my SD card when I was all said and done. It does take a little bit for those images to process, especially shooting brackets. Like I do real estate photography and I've been using the 48 megapixel so I can get like a really nice, sharp, detailed drone image. And I gotta say, I, I absolutely love the way it looks. It gives me a lot of flexibility if I wanna be fur, further enough away and really crop in on a house, I can do that without any like any penalty of resolution. Now that's done through pixel binning. I don't wanna really get into that. I can make a whole separate video just talking about the technology that's in this camera, but you're gonna to have to take my word for it that the images are far better than what we've seen in the past from previous DJI drones of this size. Like again, once again, don't get fixated on the sensor size. Now, one thing I wanna make mention of, you will need to have some ND filters for this drone. It is gonna be an absolute must. Having that F1.7 and that backside illuminated sensor, it captures a lot more light. So you wanna to wanna to control the lighting a little bit more during the daytime. So I found myself using an ND16 and an ND32 quite a bit, especially when filming in D-Log. Speaking of D-Log, I found that it was much more forgiving on the Air 3 than the Air 2S and even my Mavic 3 Pro D-Log M. It absolutely allowed me to overexpose by about a stop and a half to almost two stops with good recovery in the highlights and in the shadows. And a lot of that's just how this new sensor captures the highlights to the shadows. It just does it a lot more evenly, giving you a lot more flexibility. It's really hard to explain, but I'll have some test footage down there if you want to color grade. If you're somebody that is terrible at color grading, don't know anything about color grading, you have to try it because I promise you it is a lot easier with this D-Log M. It's a lot easier with this camera system. And I'm not even that great when it comes to coloring. And I was able to get really nice reproduction out of this camera. Very, very happy. Now, when comparing this to the Air 2S, I only got a chance to do a couple of comparisons before I realized that the batteries were swelling on my Air 2S. But from the couple of samples that I did, I will say this. Straight out of the box, if you're just looking for normal color profile, the Air 3 does a better job of capturing beautiful color straight out of the gate. D-Log M is much more vibrant and usable after it's been graded than it is on the Air 2S. However, with that said, if you just go by the wide angle sensor and you try to punch in like, let's say 200%, you will notice that the Air 2S is slightly sharper. And it's only slightly sharper because it already starts with a crop while the Air 3 has no crop so it's not really a fair one-to-one -one comparison flying at the same spot, the same altitude. But again, it's one of the things to consider because you have two sensors. If you need to do something where you know you're going to crop, hit over to that three times lens and you won't have to worry about losing any resolution if you are going to use something for crop. That's something that you can't do on the Air 2S. But overall, I think the images look really fantastic and I don't have any complaints. In nighttime, I felt like the images were better than the Air 2S. If you haven't seen the video I did on the Air 2S at night, it was done like two or three years ago. Be sure to check that out. I'll leave that in the description below if you wanna do some comparative shots. I flew the same spot, same pretty much area that I flew with the Air 3, and I think the Air 3 just wiped the floor with the Air 2S's night quality. It has a dedicated night mode, which again, thanks to that new backside illuminated stack sensor, it's able to do much more image processing and suppress the noise greater than some of these older drones that let noise hit the sensor because you were pushing such high ISOs. I just throw it into night mode, put it in auto and let it do its thing. In the night mode, you can choose between 24p or 30p. You don't get 60p, which I really wouldn't recommend filming at such a high frame rate at night because you're gonna let less light to the sensor. So something to make mention of, but overall, I thought it did absolutely phenomenal. And I have zero complaints from this sensor at night. I guess what I'm trying to say is that size doesn't always matter. Sometimes it's how it's used that may come across inappropriate. All right, let's go back to the front room and wrap up this video. Alrighty, so that's going to do it for my first impression of the Air 3. If you can't already tell, I'm pretty impressed with this drone. I don't have a lot of bad things to say about it because it sort of exceeded my expectations. OcuSync 4, 
dual cameras, best-in-class flight time, new battery that slides into the rear, improved obstacle avoidance, a better airframe, something that brings it more in line with the Mavic 3 and Mini 3 Pro lineup. It shoots vertical video. I mean, what's not to love? There's just so much here to unpack. But if you're interested in checking this out for yourself, check out that link in the description below. I will be doing a series of videos on the Air 3 from night video to real estate and professional work to some other oddball videos. And of course, I'll always put out some cinematic style video and content as I go with this drone. But like I said, four weeks having used this and it did not disappoint. I think they did a great job. And if you can get past the surface level of what size sensor is on here and just look at the image quality and the performance, you will not be disappointed. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Stay original. They checking for me, no one checking on me, so I had to go run up a check. I got the message, homie, ain't no flexing on me, my attorney gon' call and collect. Blessings on blessings for me, my successes only made them envious, they got upset. I had to put all their egos in check. I want the money to power.